College football, we have a bunch to discuss with this, of course. Uh, obviously, we are not quite out of silly season just yet. A lot of coaching changes, a lot of, uh, lot of transfers, all sorts of stuff. We have not hit National Signing Day, the old school National Signing Day. First thing I want to talk to you about, Houston quarterback Derek King transfers to Miami to play for offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley and head coach Manny Diaz. Uh, I, I want to know, do you think that he can make them good? No. Like, well, he can make them better than they were, okay? Because I do think he's a really good quarterback. I don't understand this move at all. I don't, I, I don't understand at, what he was thinking. At Houston, two years in Dana Holgerson's system, in the American, they could compete this year for the American title win a championship and and a conference championship and be in a New Year's Six Bowl. They they are going to have that ability with him as the trigger man if he could convince some of those other guys that did the same thing that they were all going to red shirt and come back. Um, and I think he's the linchpin of that. Going to a place like Miami, I don't get it all. They're not close to winning anything. Well, if I, if I you do, think they're a quarterback away, you're that's wrong. what I was going to say. I I I thought maybe this past year, if they had a competent quarterback, they could have won a lot of those games that they lost. Uh, but it wasn't just quarterback play. A nope. lot of it was it, those guys. And I, I, but I wonder how much having a competent quarterback would have changed uh, them basically just quitting in a lot of these games. Uh, well, yeah, they, they probably wouldn't quit. Like, would they have gotten blown out by some of these teams if they got dusted? Probably not. But I don't think it changes much in the win-loss column. And it damn sure doesn't have them competing for the ACC. Hey, you you might be right about that. Um, looking at their 2020 schedule right now, um, they play Temple to start off with. And if they ain't careful, Temple will, will beat their brains in. Wait, that's uh, right. That's but right. That, but that and is that, it, it's in And Miami. that's an opponent that knows King. And they're not scared of him. They've no. already played him. You're right about that. They play Wagner second. They play UAB third. Uh, so, it, looking at the schedule, if things go the way they should, they'll be 3-0 and before they go to Michigan State. That is their out-of-conference game this year, uh, and they got to play them in East Lansing. Now, Michigan State hadn't exactly been great either, but, you know, we'll see. They, uh, they host Pitt. They play at Wake Forest. They host North Carolina. They play at Virginia. Uh, they host Florida State. They play at Virginia Tech, then at Georgia Tech and Duke. Um, well, look, the ACC, and especially their division of the ACC, it's not great. All right, no. it's not very good. There's a lot of winnable games there, but I, I just don't know. I, I, they they did not look like a very cohesive team. I don't know if I'm sold on Manny Diaz being a good head coach yet. Yeah. Um, they have talent in Miami. If you're not getting talent in Miami, shame on you. But, uh, but I, you know, I don't know that they were a quarterback away from being good. I, I was shocked that that's where he landed. I, I agree with you. I, I was shocked as well. I Like I said, maybe with a competent quarterback, maybe it gets the rest of these guys to buy in. Uh, but this is a one-year thing. Like, they are still going to have to develop a quarterback. Uh, I'm curious what they look like under Rhett Lashley. Uh, Lashley, it, other than his stint at UConn, everywhere he has gone, he has been running somebody else's system, right? So he was right. he was under Gus Malzahn at Auburn. You know that's Gus's thing. And then he was at SMU last year with Sonny Dykes. And you know that that's Sonny Dykes' offense. So what is he going to do on his own with a guy that knows nothing about offense? I, I'm curious. Uh, the next topic, Dave Aranda is the new head coach at Baylor. We haven't had a chance to discuss it yet. Uh, today, he hired Jorge Munoz from LSU as his OC. Uh, Munoz, we, we talked on the show and assumed that he was going to be the guy to take Joe Brady's spot. Yeah. Um, now... My buddies down at LSU tell me that it's still in flux and LSU could hire him back um, depending on money and everything else. Now, if Baylor wants to pay somebody to be an OC, they can afford it. I mean, they were paying Matt Rule, you know, close to $7 million a year. Uh, but, you know, I, I am curious. He is from Louisiana. He is from down there. He was the offensive coordinator at uh, Louisiana Lafayette. You know, at, how much does home matter here? What What do you no, think of the he, hire? I, 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 
Well, I'm, uh, the I'm hire proud of, that, of Aranda. How's that? I'm Let me, proud of that Aranda got a job. Yeah. And I know that he's been, I didn't want him to take one. I wanted him to be Brett Venables and totally happy being a DC the rest of his life. That's a selfish thing. The man's wanted to be a head coach for a while. And I knew he's not leaving for one of these lower tier G5 jobs. Yeah. But, but like he's not taking a massive pay cut to, to, to be a head coach with, with no security at LSU. He could be the DC forever there. And, and him and Ed Ordron could have, could have made this run for the rest of their life if they want it. Um, I, I fully believe that. And, and, and now he, he didn't have to settle. He, he got a kind of a big boy, Power five job. Baylor yeah. has become, you know. There were Matt only Rule. two things that he was going to leave for. He was either going to leave to be a DC in the NFL or a P5 head coach. But see, I don't, know that good, he, I don't know that he wanted to go to the NFL much. That's that's what everybody has said is that he was either going to go be a DC in the NFL people, or. People that. said that, but you never heard him talk about it. And he never interviewed for any of those jobs. That's, that's true. I mean, you, like you if a guy's point. like he did interview for other head coaching jobs and he just never took any of them. I get that. If a guy's never interviewing for a job, just because media thinks this is a good idea, this guy would be a good DC in the NFL, yeah, he probably would because defense isn't like offense, and it's about solving problems more than it's about being innovative and creative uh, on offense. It's it's can you watch game film and, and find the guy's flaws and and, and and expose them a little bit. But, uh, you know, he, he never interviewed for any of those gigs. Yeah. I never understood where people got that other than he's too good to be where he's at, which I don't understand that at all. No, the so it, all of the stuff that I read about it was the people that were close to him said that his dream was always to coach in the NFL uh, as a DC because you can obviously make the jump from DC to head coach. Head in the coach, NFL. that's right. Um, but that that would be the only things that he would leave LSU for. He yeah. he wasn't leaving to make a lateral DC move. No. In college, it was either going to be P five head coach at a at a good job. Good job. I, I don't even know that he would have left for you know Wake Forest or you oh, know no. something I, like there's that. There's no there's no there's no chance. I think he thinks the Big Twelve is there to be got. Yeah. He just beat the hell out of Oklahoma, and they're the only team Baylor lost to. And I think he feels like I think I know how to beat this team. Hey. They didn't score a lot on, on LSU. And so if he can get some dudes in there, and I don't know how many of those Baylor kids are seniors that they're going to lose this they're year. They're not losing a lot. They're not losing But they a lot. had a hell of a defense last yeah. year. And Aranda is a better defensive mind than what they have there. Yes, I, I do agree with that. Now, that's not to take anything away from Matt Rule. Well, no, but, Rule was an offensive guy. And Rule, Rule was a CEO head coach yeah, also. 100%. 100%. Uh, Todd Graham is the new head coach at Hawaii. Uh, my question on this, and at, so back to the Aranda thing, I think it's a great hire, great move. Uh, obviously, we've got immense respect for Dave Aranda. So, yeah, we uh, this was probably the right move for him at this point. Uh, had he stayed at LSU, like, obviously, that defense is still going to be good. They got Stingley. They got, they got dudes coming back. Um, but, so let's move on to the Hawaii thing. Todd Graham, former Arizona State coach, former Tulsa coach, former Pitt coach, former – Blah, blah, blah. Um, he is the new head coach. He is not exactly a likable guy. Um, I, I'm i curious, do you think that this makes them less likable? Because Hawaii is always the fun, innovative, you know, I, I was surprised that they went this direction because they normally bring up the uh, the up-and-comer, you know. It, they had June Jones. And and they've done a couple of things since. I'd say they had Norm Chow and June Jones. Those guys weren't up and comers. They were agreed. They but, were I, but NCAA but, lifers. But they've never had a guy that the public perception of him is not likable, right? Todd yeah, Graham. But I, I, I think he's going to drastically change based on not being likable. Is he not likable at Arizona State? Is he not likable? you know, in, in the Pac-12 where recruiting is a meat grinder and you're dealing with all the things that, that these big schools are having to deal with, all the media pressures, they're not there at Hawaii. Nobody, nobody's showing up for his press conference at Hawaii and, 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 and the media is not grilling him on why he went for it on fourth and seven instead of punting. No, no those questions aren't going to – so who's not going to like him? Who's going to be hard to be around? That's, his athletic director? I don't, I don't know if the athletic director is insanely involved in Hawaii. 
You don't hear about <laughs> any of these things, right? True. The only time they, they never fire a guy, they always the, the guy always does well enough and realizes life on the mainland's cool for a couple of years, or in the islands are cool for a couple of years. But at some point in time, you want to get back to real life, yeah. and you can't live in paradise. And so, so that these guys just come back. I think this could regenerate his career. And I always question the not likable thing. There are certain guys that are just not likable. Jim Harbaugh and Urban Meyer and Nick Saban are not likable people. That's but, a good point. They, they're not. And that is unified across the board. Nobody can argue against that. If you say they're likable, you're lying and you're biased. But <laughs> other than that, I don't know who's not likable. Like there was a time where I thought Brian Kelly was an asshole. And I think – Early in his career, he did some things that were pretty awful. But I don't know that today he's not likable. So, and that's, he stayed at the same job. You, you might be and right. not a lot in his life has changed. So, you know. You you might be right about that. I'm, I'm very curious how it's going to work out. Uh, obviously, like, the guy has a knack for, for picking assistant coaches. Uh, his, two of his OCs while he was at Arizona State, Mike Norvell, Billy Napier, uh, we know the track record on those guys. Pretty, so, pretty damn good head coaches, pre- huh? Pretty good. They uh, they learned under under him. I think uh, uh, was Malzahn at Tulsa under him. I think so. Yeah, yeah, think, I think yeah so. but Malzahn was already kind of a thing before he got there. Malzahn was a high school. Oh yeah, kind I mean he, phenom. He had he had been at Arkansas before that, and, but yeah, he I was about Houston to say Nutt, under you know? under Petrino, right? Yeah, no, under uh, uh Nutt, under Houston Nutt. Nutt. Yeah, that's right, Nutt. I'm sorry. So yeah, that's uh, that's going to be interesting. So let's uh, let's go ahead and move on here. 